All right, this is Carl Irwin with another quick look at uh, impulse response reverb uh, files. And I noticed something as I was doing some modeling uh, for some impulse uh, uh, response files uh, that I was getting some results that sounded really, really interesting. They sounded uh, to me, it's, it was kind of like crinkling leaves or plastic. And I believe uh, what that was from the uh, virtual modeling was each each little clip of sort of white no, white noise uh, symbolized a reflection that was being recorded inside of the impulse response. And it got me to thinking, what if you organically created that same kind of sound uh, with uh, a real object? So I went and grabbed a potato chip bag and uh, I uh, crinkled it up. Uh, and I layered it on top of itself uh, for about four seconds, and I uh, put a fade, gradual fade on it. This is what I came up with. So you have that sort of, these sort of white noise clips. And I threw this into a uh, Convolution Reverb plugin to see what the re result was. And the, the result was amazingly good. Uh, it, it created a very, very clean uh, reverb effect, a sort of a clean hall sort of reverb. And it got me to thinking that um, as a reverb, this is doable uh, uh, to, to sort of organically create an experimentation various types of reverb, uh, and I did so. So I made uh, several types that were different lengths. I also played around with the idea of layering the uh, sound upon itself, but changing its uh, pitch. So lowering it an octave, raising an octave, uh, putting together various octave iterations of it, uh, and then uh, seeing what the results were. Obviously, the deeper you make uh, this sound, the more frequencies you pick out in the lower register uh, in your reverb. And uh, I put together a number of samples using this, but I also went back to some other samples that I've had, other impulse, impulse response files that I've created from spaces that I have access to. So studio rooms, um, uh, studio booths, uh, uh, a soundstage area, rehearsal space, about 30 by 40 foot rehearsal space. And I had recorded some impulse files using a clapboard method. Uh, so a, a board that would clap and create that white noise um, uh, accent. And uh, what I did is I altered those using this. I added uh, light layers of this sort of uh, uh, crinkling sound to augment uh, and alter those spaces just a little bit. And I put together a, a set of reverbs that I'm going to share with you. I'll put a link in the description below uh, to a zip file that has all of my impulse files on it. And uh, they're free for you to use for whatever you want, uh, but just a little bit of experimentation that I'm sharing with you. Let's look at how this uh, works out inside of uh, a project. So I have a project opened here, and I have, um, it's, it's a, a small orchestral uh, piece. It's actually a cue from a film score that I'm working on currently, uh, sort of a downtrodden psychological thriller. And this is just a cue from a moment in the film. And uh, there is a small orchestra ensemble, small string section, and then uh, a solo violin, a solo piano. There's a small brass section, very small woodwind section. And then over here I have a sub bass channel. And the way I have this routed is that everything is coming down to this one bus, which is a room mix. And I'm sending my sub bass to the mix down. So the sub bass will not get any effects. All the effects will only be applied, uh, this reverb will be applied within the room mix, but individually per channel, per section, I've applied another instance of convolution reverb. And the idea here is that I'm going to use my various impulse files to put each of these sections in their respective space within a, um, a soundstage setting. Uh, so these are incredibly dry uh, takes. If I play, I'm gonna play this back, you can hear this is the dry, rendition of it uh, with everything mixed in. It is uh, all the sections are stereo, but they are dry. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll apply our convolution reverbs and uh, we'll see, see what the result is.
Okay, so that's the entire cue. Um, and you can hear it's very dry, especially you can hear it on the uh, solo instruments, that there's just no fall off whatsoever in the recording, completely dry. Um, let's go through each one of these uh, groups and see what's going on. So for the strings, uh, this is going to be the group that would uh, be closest in our virtual space, our virtual soundstage, to the microphone. So uh, I've employed uh, a sample that I've called uh, Front dark sound stage. So this is the impulse file that I created for a real space and then I layered it upon itself uh, an octave register lower to bring out uh, lower frequencies in the in the room. So uh, this is this one I have I think uh, two iterations of this. I have a, a normal or three. I have a normal one, a dark one, and then I have an augmented one that applies our uh, crinkly sound which is not being used here. So uh, that's the first one. And you can see that this is set to about 30 dB, and the dry level is at zero, so it's full out. And I have not backed off anything on this. No EQ, no EQ. this is just exactly what the room sounds like. And uh, the next one over here, we'll go to the woodwinds. This would be the uh, for, uh, second layer back, so this would be sitting behind the string section in our virtual space. I'm using another sample from the same room, but set from the center of the room. Uh, and this is labeled as mid-dark, so it has that octave uh, layer as well. And uh, this uh, is applied again at 30 dB minus 2 dB on the dry. So I'm pulling the dry signal out a little bit to give it some depth. And a negative 1 on the output just for mixing purposes. Again, nothing on the EQ. And then if we go back from there, we have the brass section. And the brass section is using uh, back dark sound stage. This is the furthest you can get from the microphone or from the sound source. The microphone is placed quite far back in the room, almost to the back wall, but not right up close to it. Uh, about, about five, six feet from the back wall. And uh, you can see here I have it set to just a little bit lower, uh, negative 24 dB, and I pulled back 2 dB on the dry. Uh, again, nothing on the output. Uh, it's all zeroed out and nothing in the EQ. Uh, so these are three different layers for three different sections that would be respectively at these distances from the microphone. And the samples actually were taken from those relative distances from the microphone. Then we go over to our solo instruments. So for the piano, so I applied this uh, impulse response uh, labeled Studio Booth. It's a six by eight foot room. Um, and here we have negative two dB on the dry to put it into that space. And the wet is again at about 30 dB. This is all of these, all of these um, uh, impulse responses seem to kind of normalize out at about 30 dB. Uh, nothing taken from the output or added. And again, nothing in the EQ. This is just the space. So this just gives it a little bit of a, um, a sense that this is in a separate location, that this one instrument gets a little bit different sonic treatment from everything else so that it stands out a little bit more. And then same thing for the violin. Now for the violin, I added a compressor before the reverb just to kind of uh, uh, squash down some of the louder sounds from the violin and bring up the softer sounds. So it's a little bit more prominent and more in the foreground. And uh, this is the uh, what I applied. I put it in a larger room. So this is a studio room, 12 by 15 foot room. And you can see again the wet level is about 30 dB, a negative 2 dB on the dry to place it back in space. And I did pull back 3 dB on the output uh, for mixing purposes. Again, nothing on the EQ. So these are all exactly as they sound. Now I'm going to play this first before we apply the room uh, impulse response, because this is kind of some special sauce over here we'll take a look at. Um, but again, these are all regular impulse responses. Uh, they have been edited, uh, at least the big soundstage ones have been edited to add lower frequencies from the original recording, uh, but they are all derived from an actual sound from the actual space. I did not uh, add any other kind of uh, organic or uh, um, uh, other sounds outside of the realm of that specific impulse file that was created in the room. Uh, so let's listen to this again. We'll listen to a little bit of it.
So you can hear there's not a huge tail on any of this, but everything sounds like it's in real space. It's been organized so that you can hear it, you can see it through your ears, right, the, uh, the actual locations. And these solo instruments do sound like they're in a separate kind of room, which is exactly what we want. We want to bring them out and, and give them a slightly different uh, treatment. Um, so right now it sounds like a real dry recording, but in real space, not a totally dry recording. There's a little bit of properties that have been applied from uh, the space. Uh, now, the way that I do the settings, you could see that almost everything was at about negative 30 dB. But what I, what I like to do is uh, I work very subtly on uh, this kind of room reverb, this first layer of convolution reverb. I push up on the wet signal until I can hear it change and then I pull it back just a little bit from there so that I can barely even notice something has changed. And I found that on the whole, if you do that with each individual channel, uh, what you end up with is a composite that is quite different. Uh, and you can hear that it's quite different. Now let's look at the re room reverb. Um, I'm just gonna apply it and we'll listen to what this sounds like and then we'll take a look at what that reverb is. So as I cut it, you can hear what that uh, tail sounds like. So there's about a two second uh, tail on this, and this is the uh, this is the file I'm using. So this is finish a uh, finish reverb darkest. So there's three variations of this, and if I play it back, it'll sound familiar. It's the potato chip bag reverb, right? And this is running for two seconds uh, with a fall off of two seconds. And I added three layers uh, in octaves below the original sound to give it a little bit more of a darker quality. And then I did apply some equalization on this to really make some of those uh, frequencies that I wanted to hear, warmer frequencies, pop out a little bit. Um, but in the uh, zip file that I'm giving you, I've got uh, three variations of this, and then I have three variations of a four second long reverb uh, that can be used. I think works really well for this last step room reverb. After you have set all of your instrumentation into space using the other um, impulse responses, this is a final layer that you can lay on top of everything. Uh, so that's, that's what's happening there. You can see the settings again about negative 30 and I, I did the same thing. I slid this up until I could hear a change and then I pulled it back just a little bit. Everything seems to come out about to that range. I uh, did not pull back the dry at all. I want to hear the dry signal. I didn't have to change the output and then a little bit of EQing to uh, suit my taste. So anyway, that is, uh, that's the concept there and I'll share this package with you in the uh, description. Go ahead and feel free to download that. I'll leave that up and uh, you can use it for anything that you want. It does not matter uh, what uh, projects you're working on or what use you're going to use it for. Uh, in fact, feel free to edit them and feel free to distribute them. Uh, I'll put a zero license on it. So a zero uh, common, a Creative Commons license. You can do whatever you want with it uh, in any way that you want. So anyway, best of luck with that and happy mixing.